An important area of study and research in computer science is algorithms, in particular the analysis of algorithms. In this presentation, we're going to take a look at our search algorithms, the binary and sequential search. There's different kinds of analysis that you could do. You could analyze the correctness of an algorithm and whether or not it contains errors. You could analyze its clarity. How well does it express the algorithm and is it easily understood? And you can also analyze the algorithm's efficiency. How well does it use time and space resources such as the CPU or the computer's memory? That's the type of analysis we're referring to in this presentation. What is efficiency? That's the issue that comes into play when large amounts of data are involved. Basically looks at questions like, how long will it take to sort a million numbers? How much memory will it require? Efficiency analysis usually focuses on the size of the input, which is usually abbreviated N. So for example, here is a table showing the amount of time in seconds that it took to sort N numbers on a smartphone using bubble sort. For 10 numbers, it was less, almost 2 tenths of a second. But for 100 numbers, it took 18 seconds. So you can see that the time is growing quite rapidly for bubble sort. Why is that? Well, we're going we're gonna to see that eventually. The actual time an algorithm takes depends on the type of computer. So for example, if you run the same algorithm and on the same problem, it'll take vastly different times based on what type of computer, whether you're running on a smartphone or a supercomputer. So that poses a problem in terms of being able to analyze the algorithm. How do we analyze the algorithm itself rather than its implementation on one particular computer or another? The answer is we abstract away the details. So here's our friend abstraction again. We boil the algorithm down to its essential features. For example, here's the implementation of binary search in App Inventor. Yikes! Let's not even look at the details. What we can boil it down to is the essential question of how many guesses does it take to find or not find the target, the thing you're searching for, when you're doing a binary search. And if you boil it down to that, then it, you can express it in terms of this simple pseudocode. You're going to repeat guessing until your guess is correct or you run out of numbers in the list. And your guess is going to be always the middle number in the list. If the guess is too high, you cut off the top half of the list. If it's too low, you cut off the bottom half of the list. And if it's correct, you stop. You found your target. The essential question then is how many guesses to find or not find the target. And let's work through a simple example. Here's a, a list of eight letters in order. Um, we're going to perform what's called a worst case analysis. That is, what's the maximum number of guesses required to find or not find the target letter? What's the worst case? So suppose we're searching for the letter C, which is at, in index 1. We initially guess the letter at location 4, but that guess is too high. So we cut off the top half of the list, and we make our next guess at the middle of the bottom half. So our next guess is at index 2, but that's also too high. So we cut off the top half of that sublist, and we make a third guess, which is correct. So we found our target. So the result in this case was the target was found at index 1. And to summarize this, we had eight items to search through, and we were able to find the item we were looking for in three guesses. Let's look at another example. Suppose we're searching for A in this list of 16 letters, but notice that A is not there. The letters are in order. Our first guess will be at the midpoint of the list. That is too high, so we cut off the top half. We guess the midpoint of the bottom half of the list. That's too high, so we cut off the top half of that sublist and make a third guess at the midpoint of the sub-sublist. That's too high, so we cut off the top half of that list, and we guess at the midpoint of the one remaining sub-sub-sublist. That's also too high, and so the result is that the target is not found in this case. But still, to summarize, with 16 items, it took us four guesses. So we've doubled the number of items from our previous example, but only took one more guess. 
That's the beauty of binary search. Let's take a look now at sequential or linear search. It's the same essential question, how many guesses to find or not find the target. Here's the implementation of sequential search. Again, there's lots of details here uh, that, that aren't essential to the basic question of how many guesses will it take to find or not find the target. So we can boil sequential search down to this simple algorithm expressed in pseudocode. The first guess is to guess that the target is the first number of the list, and then you repeat guessing until you're correct or there's no more numbers in the list. If the guess is correct, you stop. Otherwise, you guess the next number in the list. So let's apply it to this example of a list with eight letters in it. We, our first guess is the first item in the list, and it's wrong. So we cross it off, and we guess the second item in the list. It's wrong. So we cross it off, and we continue in this way. I think you can see where this is going, until we get all the way to the end of the list, and our eighth guess is wrong. Therefore, the result is that the target is not found. And the summary in this case is that there were eight items, and it took eight guesses. So that's quite a bit different performance than binary search. What we're interested in is for both algorithms and for all algorithms when we analyze efficiency like this, is what happens as n, the inputs, the size of the list that we're searching, grows larger? In worst case analysis, the question is how many guesses will it require as a function of n, the input size? And as you can see from just those simple examples, the number of guesses grows as n gets larger. So here's to summarize where we were. We did binary search on a list with eight items. It took three guesses. On a list of 16, it took four guesses. Our sequential search took eight guesses for a list of eight items. I think you can see that it would take 16 guesses in the worst case for a list with 16 items in it. If we double the number of items, sequential search will double the amount of guesses it has to make and binary search will only increase by one. If we double it again and again, then every time we double it, sequential search takes twice as many guesses in the worst case. Binary search takes just one more guess every time we double it. So to, to summarize this, we can say that sequential search is like the linear function of n, whereas Binary search as a function of n is a logarithmic function of n. You're probably familiar with the shapes of their graphs. So the linear function, the blue one here, is the way sequential search would grow as n gets larger, the number of guesses as a function of n gets larger. Whereas for binary search, the, as n gets larger, the number of guesses gets larger, but it does so very slowly compared to sequential search, as we saw. Where this is really important is as n gets really big. And here's a table to illustrate that point. So um, notice that for binary search, uh, 16,000 numbers will take 14 guesses to find it. Whereas for sequential search, it'll take 16,000 guesses. That's quite a huge difference. And, you know, look at the difference when you get up to a million numbers. 20 guesses in binary search over a million guesses in sequential search. So I hope you can see that this type of analysis is important when you're selecting an algorithm to use to solve a problem. So to summarize the important facts about search algorithms, we say sequential search is linear. Its running time grows proportional to a linear curve as n grows bigger. Binary search is logarithmic. Its running time grows proportional to a logarithmic curve as n grows bigger. And of course, binary search works only on sorted data. What we're going to do next is we're going to let you experiment with some algorithms. We've um, got an app that has both binary and sequential search implemented. Too. Your job is to, to see if you can figure out which algorithm is which.